The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie, and in today's episode, I'm going to be making a super bright torch to go camping with, with a few extra special functions. A while ago, we were camping, had a fairly bright torch, but I quite like as bright as possible. So it got me thinking, I wonder what the brightest I could make a torch that's rechargeable, that's still quite easy to carry around and portable. Um, and other things that are handy when we're camping is the ability to charge phones and stuff like that. So I thought well, if you've got a rechargeable battery pack and you're charging it whilst out and about and things, why not add in some extra functions? So I'm going to see if I can put in some USB charging, maybe a 12 volt charging port for things like our airbed inflator that we take when we're camping as well. So let's see how this goes. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So for making a torch, the most important thing is going to be the light. So I've started looking at ways to solve this uh, LED available separately or arrays of LEDs and how to mount them. So I saw my brother wiring up a new work light on his tractor. So this is what he was wiring up and this looked really good for a torch. It's all one sealed waterproof unit. Uh, they're designed, you mount them on the tractor and whereas the headlights are illuminating out, you can shine it down on the area directly in front as a secondary light. They run off 12 volts and when you connect them up, they are fairly bright. So that is what I'm going to use as a main light source. They seem really easily available online. Um, I'm guessing they get used in other applications as well as tractors any sort of machinery working, etc. So then to add some extra functionality, I'm also going to put in one of these, which is just a 12 volt power port. And I've got this one, which is in the same format. It can be panel mounted, um, but when you open it up, there's a one amp and a 2.1 amp five volt USB socket. Uh, and both of these will just come 12 volts, the same as our light will. So I'm going to use both of those. And then all I need to do in addition to these is to make a PCB with a battery charging circuit and outputs for all these 12 volt units. I'll probably also make uh, some sort of power indicator, have a DC in for powering it. And then I've also got this 14.4 volt DC rechargeable four cell battery. So all of these are designed for 12 volts, but they will go up well beyond the 16 volt, which the maximum that is 16.8 uh, volt, but these are all in the limits of that. Um, so that will power all of them. So now all I need is to make up a PCB with a little charge circuit for our battery pack and outputs for these. So let's get on and have a look at the design for that. So here's the schematic. So the circuit mainly revolves around this chip, which is the Mac 1732. So open the data sheet for this, this is a switch mode lithium ion battery charger. So this is going to do all our battery management for us. So in our circuit, I've got all this around this. There's LEDs that come out of it for if it's doing a fast charge, full charge, fault. Uh, there's, so I've set this in here. I've got a zero ohm link and some do not fit. So this, for this case, 
I'm going to use a four cell battery so that resistor there will set it up to do four cell but I've given myself the options in the future to do less cells three cells two cells no cells so uh, one cell even so I've given myself the option to do uh, different counts of cells in batteries in the future nice and easily so we've got our input here and then this circuit is based around the typical application circuit and in the back here there's uh, information for design for induction ductors and capacitors and resistors and all that lot but this circuit's available in the files so you can have a closer look at it but mainly we've got the battery input here I've got the LEDs on the PCB but I've also got headers for them so I can put them on the outside of the case and here I've got four connectors that I can connect up to get an output from the battery so this is where my light and my um, USB power supply and stuff is all going to go on to so I've got those four and corresponding grounds for each of those and then on here I've also got this which is a quick battery tester so when you press the push button it will connect up this circuit I've got a 5 volt regulator to power these off so this comparator has the check battery voltage with different resistors so it's checking against a different voltage and the LED turns on if it's above that threshold so then if I go to this I then just put this on a PCB this chip is a surface mount component only so yeah I've got this is all our power management this corner is the check voltage and here are our outputs so I'm going to send that off and get my PCB back ready to populate so here's all our components and here's the PCB so I'm going to solder those to the PCB next to make up our battery charging board so here we go so for the case for this project I wanted to find something that was uh, had some degree of water tightness um, then we don't have to worry about where we put it if we're out camping and stuff um, don't have to worry about moisture getting in onto the board battery water ingress so I was trying to think of something that I could print but it's probably not going to be it's going to be incredibly hard to make it watertight um, so I tried to think of things I could buy off the shelf that I could use um, a lot of them didn't have handles so I started looking at handles um, and then I found this which is a plastic ammo style box which fits the bill perfectly uh, it's got a gasket in there so it's fairly watertight it's got space for the board and the battery I'll sh well, it's a bit too big but I'm, I'll think of something to do with the extra space I'm sure there'll be stuff to put in there I'm going to try to make sure that there's the minimum holes drilled in it as possible because every extra hole adds a place for water ingress but yeah this is going to be the case I'm going to use Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. So with the box I'd chosen, there was quite a lot of additional space in there. If I just put the control board and the battery in, they would rattle around, probably end up damaged. So uh, I needed to design something to hold them in place. So this is what I designed. So I've used OpenSCAD. So then I've got a base, then I've got uh, a wall at the end to hold up the lid and then I've got another wall in the middle this so then this section is the right shape for the battery 
a little cut through here for the wires to pass through to the control board which is in this section and then there's a semicircle so the wires from the control board can go up this back section and then here because it's all modules we can choose which bit to display so we can print them separately so that is our main insert and this is our lid and this is the end section so they're ready to print so whilst i'm waiting for the print to come off the 3d printer i just thought i'd add when i was trying to get the dimensions of the box it was quite hard to get measurements from down at the bottom of it so i was cutting up pieces of foam board uh, and trying them for size so i had most of the pieces cut out a foam board so I've just stuck them together as a little example you don't have to have a 3d printer to do stuff like this if you cut them out with board foam board whatever materials you've got at hand you can actually make an insert right so in that video you've just seen it fail the print head fell off the machine. Uh, so we've ended up being left with the main insert part done. I did manage to get the lid printed first. So we've got the lid, but I need to reprint the main insert and then do the end section still. However, actually we can use this uh, just to check our measurements before we print it again. So I can put this in the box and check the fit so actually it's a really good fit it's worked really well one thing i've noticed is that on the ends because the box is wider at the top than at the bottom uh, i've got a gap so that might mean that there ends up being some movement so seeing as i've got to reprint it now anyway i'm just going to go back into the cad and i'll add a little spacer at each end so now we can see that I've added those bits in. So I've got a little bit added here on the end of the main insert and I've added a bit at the top and the bottom of the end insert. With the measurements, I found it's five mil at the bottom for that end and seven mil at the top. So that's what I've added. So now I'm gonna send those two pieces again. The lid was fine, so that's good. So we'll print those out and hopefully this time it will all go through without any problems. So here it is all assembled, our working work light based rechargeable torch. It's come together really nicely. There was a couple issues I had during assembling, which was the cutout in that wall for the wires to pass through from the battery compartment to the control board and vice versa. The cutout is completely blocked by the battery so I couldn't pass any of the wires through there. So I've put them along the sides, but that's making the walls bulge out slightly, which means this top lid isn't sitting uh, flat. So that needs a bit of a tweak in the design just to make that cutout bigger. And the other problem I found was I didn't account for how bulky these panel mounted USB and 12 volt were at the back. So the USB socket there is clashing with the back of the on off switches for the light and the auxiliary power. So this unit should be flush with that and it's not there's a bit of a lip there but again if i tweak the file i could put those switches out and up a bit and then they'll clear it so functionality i can turn on the usb in 12 volt using that button and that one will turn the light on and off i've got my charging and that button to check the current battery voltage. So let's turn the lights off and see how it works. So 
I'm really pleased with how this has come out. There was these couple design flaws, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I was also really pleased that on the control board, charging board for it, I put in those um, do not fit resistors so I can change that zero ohm link. So the board is actually gonna be reusable for other projects. Anything that I need a lithium ion charger for, I can change it now between one cell, two cell, three cell or four cell batteries. So that's made it really useful for in the future. The design needs tweaking a little bit for the cutouts and where the holes are for mounting the switches, but that's not a big thing to change. So overall, I'm really pleased with it. It works, it's functional, it charges my phone. It's gonna be perfect for our next camping trip. So have you ever made a torch? Have you made an accessory to make camping go a bit easier? Come on to the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents and let me know and we'll see you next time.